and welcome to this evening's webinar about the Master of Intelligence. Again, thank you for taking the time out to join us at the Postgraduate Virtual Fair. My name is Andrew. I work in the Future Students team at Macquarie University. I'm going to be hosting the session this evening. And on behalf of this gathering, I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge the First Nations peoples of Australia and Elders, past, present and emerging. Well, this evening's session, as I mentioned, is about the Master of Intelligence. And we're very fortunate to have a special guest here this evening, Dr. Alain Ullman. Dr. Ullman is an anthropologist by training who has held academic positions in Australia and overseas. And he has worked in the Australian public service in various analytic, managerial and policy roles. He joined the Department of Security Studies and Criminology at Macquarie University in 2018 and is a lecturer in intelligence studies and cybersecurity. I'll let him talk a bit more about himself shortly. While Dr. Ullman presents, we're going to be running, um, or after he presents, we're going to be running a live uh, Q&A and discussion. And we've enabled our chat box at the bottom of your screen uh, for you to ask questions. If you have any questions now, throughout the presentation, or even afterwards, please pop them in there. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Dr. Ullman to commence our presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I hope you all hear me. Um, Okay, uh, Master of Intelligence at Macquarie. So these are actually quite busy times, you all know, and um, that's not necessarily very good but for the nation, but it's quite fortunate for those of us who are in the business of intelligence. There are quite a few um, agencies around looking for people with um, relevant skills in the field. So it's a good time for business, a bad time for the country, but that's the way it goes. Okay, now the as the computer freezes, I need to, apologies, just a sec. Okay, what is intelligence? Uh, there are actually many different ways of conceptualizing intelligence and, um, and some people focus on the um, collection, on espionage, on things like along the, I think I'm out. I'm back, I think I had a bit of a problem. Do you hear me? We can hear you, Alan. All right, okay. I'm not sure what happened. Um, there was some you know, equipment failure. Okay, so let's resume. Excuse me, Alon, would you like yes. to put on your... Yep, exactly. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. For... Okay, so what is intelligence? As I said, there are people who like to focus on espionage, collection. James Bond is a very good uh, image that people have in mind when they talk about intelligence. Um, I belong to one of those people who actually like to focus on um, perhaps intelligence as support for intelligent decision making, um, intelligent um, policy um, formulation and the like. So here's one example of intelligence at work. Um, this is a report that's been decla declassified. Originally it was presented to the President of the United States in August of 2001. It's about a person called Bin Laden who apparently is determined to strike in the US. Um, not much longer than a month later, he did indeed strike. So this is a good example of what intelligence is um, and probably the most important part of intelligence. Now, while there are many different um, arguments over what intelligence may be, um, we all tend to kind of agree on what intelligence failure looks like. These are two images of intelligence failure. Um, the one um, on the left is the one from Pearl Harbor, um, uh, a surprise attack by the Japanese during World War II, and September 11th, 2001, you see an aircraft, the second aircraft on its way to the Twin Towers. Now, it's important to keep in mind that um, in, at least in national security, most intelligence failures are also intelligence successes of the other side. So. By the same token, these could be images also of intelligence success of um, a very good deception operation by the Japanese and um, 
by Al-Qaeda. In any event, intelligence continues to fail, um, very rarely fails to fail. Um, in this case, we're talking about uh, epidemiological intelligence, um, COVID-19, the United States caught by surprise, unnecessarily, ill-prepared, and the figures actually show, show what's a very, very unfortunate situation. Okay, so what themes are actually covered in the uh, Masters of Intelligence at Macquarie? Well, we cover issues such as intelligence analysis, um, like production of that uh, product on um, bin Laden, intelligence collection. Um, there are different means of collection. We have open source collection. That's when we approach um, legal sources or open sources of information that can be anything from newspapers to um, academic conferences. And then there are the covert modes of collection. We have things like SIGINT, um, you know, when we tap communication information or other kinds of computer communication, um, IMINT, image intelligence, that could be satellites going overhead and um, taking pictures of things. Um, human, human intelligence, those are the spies um, that can collect um, information. So all those things are part of what we call um, collection. Now to be, to be effective, intelligence needs to be disseminated to decision makers and other customers. And much of the failure that we do see in intelligence has a, a, to do with uh, that kind of link between the intelligence analysis on the one hand and customers on the other, when dissemination doesn't operate properly or where there's too much influence from uh, decision-making on uh, intelligence. So um, those issues are covered as well. We look at governance and oversight, important parts of um, intelligence. Now, counterintelligence and counterespionage. They're also a very, very significant part of um, the work of intelligence and what makes an intelligence community. Um, Denial and deception, those are the little tricks that um, spies play on one another and um, that um, nation states also do to one another. Usually deception is the weapon of the week. So if you think about um, wars like 1973, when Egypt and Syria, mostly Egypt actually preferred a very, um, well, use deception in order to inflict a very painful strategic surprise on Israel. That's an example of um, deception in action. Information warfare becoming more and more um, significant. There are two aspects to information warfare that we cover in the courses that we teach. One of them is more of the um, signals intelligence part. That's the use of, the, um, use of uh, cyber to um, cause all kinds of um, effects on information system, information technology related um, warfare. And the other thing is just things like disinformation, misinformation, propaganda. Um, think about the Russian uh, campaign against the United States um, during the 2016 presidency. That's a good example of um, that part of the, the more cognitive aspect of information warfare. And there's covert action. Covert action is um, um, things that um, action military or otherwise that states launch, but then seek to be able to deny. And those also come under the purview of um, intelligence. All right, so these are the, um, these faces, are the core um, staff that teach in the uh, program. So we have Bridget Nolan from the United States. Um, Brian is uh, from New Zealand, Fred also from the US. And then there's uh, me, I come, well, I'm originally from Israel um, on the, the representing the Australian intelligence community here. All of us have um, background in intelligence as well as um, in academia. Bridget is a sociologist by training. Brian is a historian. I'm an anthropologist. Uh, and Fred was probably the non He has a background in law, although he's mostly teaching. He does not um, do research. The rest of us also do research, combined research and teaching. Like I said, we have a background in intelligence communities. Um, actually, at the moment, we're all from Five Eyes intelligence communities. And um, so we bring both the um, practical experience and the uh, academic experience to bear. All right, now there are various career trajectories in intelligence. Um, some go very far up, 
Putin is probably a good example, started in the KGB all the way to the Kremlin. Now um, a president, has been a president for a very long time and intends to remain a president for an extremely long time. Uh, but then some career trajectories in intelligence, and actually that's probably more common, don't end that well. Um, next to Putin here, you see um, Eli Cohen, um, an Israeli spy in Syria who ended up in a very unfortunate situation. Now in the world of intelligence, we have many, many different skills that are required. So we have the intellectual skill um, coming under the picture of um, Alan Turing, um, a genius who helped develop what was probably the first computer after, um, during World War II as part of the um, attempt to decrypt uh, German uh, communications. His life afterwards, after the war took a turn. I mean, well, he was a genius and uh, he developed all kinds of, um, he was involved in science in various aspects. Uh, he was also gay and suffered extreme um, repression um, with the homophobic uh, policies of the time. Uh, he might, it's debatable whether he committed suicide or um, died by accident um, following um, various treatments that were forced upon him. Um, a very unfortunate situation. There's a movie that came out um, a couple of years ago about him. Um, but anyhow, here's a good example of the very profound, uh, the very strong intellectual skill sets that are required in intelligence. Next to him, you can see um, Mata Hari, a very, very famous um, spy from World War I who used um, her strengths and uh, men's weaknesses in order to collect lots of information. Um, it's debatable of how significant she was as a spy, but um, her story ended up also in a very, very tragic way. Um, she was um, executed following the war. Now, there are many people in intelligence who die in the line of duty, but we also have an intelligence, people who even start their line of duty after they died. And that is um, uh, Glenmore um, Michael next to um, Mata Hari. He was a Welsh uh, homeless person who died in London during World War II, and then his body was used um, to be as part of a deception um, operation against um, the Germans. He was dressed as a, an RAF pilot with um, fake plans put in his clothes, uh, uh, fake plans to invade Europe um, in one place, in Sardinia, was the um, original, the real intention at the time was to invade somewhere else. Um, his body was taken by submarine, uh, dumped next to the Spanish coast, which was picked up by the Spanish fleet. Um, at the time, the Spanish authorities were cooperating with the Germans. The body with all the deceptive information was passed on to the Germans, and it was very, very significant in um, inflicting a major strategic surprise to the um, Germans. So that's uh, interestingly, in intelligence, you have to have many, many different skill sets. And sometimes being dead is exactly what you need to get into the intelligence community. Okay, so that's as much as, as far as we'll go talk about intelligence. The courses that we offer in the Department of Security Studies and Criminology. Today I'm talking about the um, Master of Intelligence, which is on the, the line, the second one from the bottom, the one or 1.5 year courses. We otherwise offer, um, we offer the uh, um, research degrees, um, the PhD, and then the Master of Research. Um, those are degrees that are um, mostly research intensive. Now, those of you who might want to continue after this degree into research, you can get into from a Master's of Intelligence, you'd be able to continue to your Master of Research um, with only one year course in the Master of Research, you can get credit for your Master in Intelligence. Now, um, this is uh, the list of the courses that we have in our postgraduate coursework. The Master of Intelligence has um, the series of courses that um, cover those themes that uh, I mentioned earlier. Now, one thing that's really, really important, and that is the university, um, Macquarie gives you the option of also doing double master degrees. And if you ask me, I think probably the best value for money, most um, 
um, you know, you can get the most bang for your buck is a combined master of intelligence with master of cybersecurity analysis. Given the trends in the labor market, um, both of those things are in great demand. And both in the intelligence community and in the cybersecurity market, there's demand for people with skills in both areas. So if you did a degree in Master of Intelligence as well as Master of Cybersecurity, you'd stand out both in the um, labor market for intelligence positions as well as cybersecurity uh, positions. Also, we um, th this area is quite hot as far as um, academic work goes. Um, it's also quite a significant part of um, uh, current um, trends in uh, security and um, criminology. So. Highly recommended. It's a two-year course if you combine the, both those uh, masters. Very, very worthwhile. But we welcome you also to just the one or one and a half years program in the Master of Intelligence. Okay, so if you just focus on Master of Intelligence, normally it's a one and a half year length program. These are again are the courses that are taught and these are some of the career options that are available to people in intelligence. So you could become an intelligence officer. Some of our graduates ended up in agencies like ASIO. Um, you can be um, an intelligence analyst and those we can find both at state level and um, at uh, federal level. Um, you have um, regulatory intelligence um, that is also very important. We have student uh, graduates have um, found work there. And some of our graduates are in defense doing various um, work within the military. 